NFTs, they were a huge part of this last cycle that we had. And before the whole NFT craze or when it just started, I was a huge critic of the space. I did not understand why these pictures, these JPEGs would have so much value, why people continued to flock to them, why they were going up like they were. It all just seemed super silly to me until late when I started to really dive into the NFT space um, because I feel like, you know, I feel more comfortable now that, you know, we're in a bear market. You're starting to see which projects are sticking around, which, you know, which ones aren't. Um, but after doing some research and really looking, taking a closer look at NFTs and not just NFTs, but the psychology of a retail investor in general, I truly believe that they will be the biggest performers in the next cycle. We already saw massive performance out of NFTs last cycle. You know, your Bored Apes, your um, your Punks, these projects all exploded last cycle um, and did amazing ROIs. And so I wanted to fundamentally find out why that was the case and what was the difference between that and shitcoining. You know, why were NFTs doing way better than shitcoins really ever were? And I know there's gonna be some arguments about this, about tokens that people made a lot of money on, but I think in mass, more wealth has been created with NFTs um, than there were with shitcoins. And I'm gonna explain more on that. Um, what I wanna talk about first is sort of the idea of an NFT, okay? so. We know that NFTs are, they're, you know, artwork that's on the blockchain. You can own the artwork. You know, it's, it's, what's the difference here? Well, I think there's more to it than that. I think the good blue chip NFTs, the ones that retain value, create a community around them. And I mean a tight knit community. When you look at something like Board Ape Yacht Club, those people are proud to hold a board ape, very proud, much more so than you would ever get out of any shitcoin. You know, yes, tokens themselves have generated communities, there's communities around them, and some of them are very outspoken. But I feel like the community sort of dynamic is a lot different when you look at NFTs. Um, rather than when you're looking at a token, you know, where the, the community might be very defensive at those who attack it, not to say that that doesn't occur in NFTs, it seems like people are more confident in their NFT holdings than they are with tokens. It was, it's almost really easy to shake people out of their token holdings, um, whereas with, you know, things like Bored Apes or um, even some of the smaller projects, you, it's a lot harder to shake people out of those positions. And I think the reason for that is because you, it's easy to develop an identity around that specific NFT. And the reason for that is because you have the image that goes along with an NFT, okay? And this is the major difference between an NFT and a token, one of, is the idea that you can build an, almost an entire brand around an NFT. And because of this, it gives people something else to look at other than the price on a chart um, and a reason to want to hold this. Because let's, I mean, let's face it, most people who invest in tokens aren't investing in the tokens for the necessarily the value of the project. Like you don't buy Uniswap and like most people don't buy Uniswap and because they intend to use the token and DeFi and all these other things, right? They buy it because they think price will go up, you know? Um, and, and I know there's governance and things like that. And so I'm not necessarily diving into all that, but I think for most people, most retail holders, um, you know, the, the sort of smaller holders, the ones that are maybe five figures um, in net worth, you know, I don't think that they fundamentally use those tokens like the they're necessarily intended. I think I would, I bet you if you would go and look that a lot of the participation rates across the board um, on token holders is pretty low. It's, you know, it's a fractional size. You end up with a lot of whales who vote for things that, that actually care about the governance um, and the rest is people holding on, hoping that the price goes up. Again, in the NFT space, you have a sort of third dimension to this. You have the image itself. Um, and again, a lot of times it's, you know, profile pictures. Um, and I think metaverse and all this is going to be massive in the future too here. But right now, you know, PFPs are the main focus of NFTs. They're the popular ones because you can use it on your Twitter account. You can use it on any account. Um, and again, you get that sense of community. Now, 
Another fundamental difference between NFTs and shitcoins, and a reason why I think their ceiling is a lot higher, is because you, for one, don't have a market sell button, okay? So you quite literally cannot just market dump a an NFT. You can list it at floor price, absolutely, or even below floor, floor price if you wanna sell it quickly, um, but there's no button where you can get instant liquidity um, you know, in, in the NFT space. Again, I know that there's people that you can list it way below the floor and, you know, it'll probably sell fast, but I'm talking about an actual button that you press and you have cash in your account. Um, that's just not the case with NFTs. A lot of times you have to list them and wait. Um, and so you kind of weed out these like weaker hands in the beginning after mint. Um, a lot of the people who are, you know, paper handing will do it then. And then outside of that, you start to build that community. Um, and so these people, like don't really want to list below floor or they might list right at floor um so i guess that would be the equivalent to market selling but again i i think for me it feels a lot different and i think most people um it also does feel like you know you're more it's more of a long-term position we always talk about retail investors love to talk about how they're thinking long term most of them aren't even when they say that um but with, with nfts i really do think it's easier to think of long term so Again, that is one big piece. Um, and outside of the market sell button, the tokenomics sort of structure of NFTs, um, you, first of all, you don't really have tokenomics, you just have the supply, which in most cases is a very low fixed supply with very little, if any, inflation. You know, you might have a project that launches, um, you know, different vertical projects off of it, something like Bored Ape Yacht Clubs, you have the Mutant Apes, things like that, but they're not necessarily taking value away from the Bored Apes. Instead, I would argue that they're adding value because it gives you another piece of your ape, um, and if you own both, now you're definitely less likely to sell, um, and so, you know, these types of things are huge psychological things that keep NFTs relevant and that will, I think, raise the ceiling of NFTs massively. Um, and another piece going off of the tokenomics is you have the manipulation in the NFT space, I will say is just sort of different, okay? And yes, what manipulation does absolutely occur in NFTs, that's, there's no doubt about that. I think it's more obvious, um, and I think retail understands this. Like, there's only a certain amount of things that you can do to manipulate NFT prices. Um, and as of this moment, you can't really go short an NFT. So. You know, you kind of have, it's a lot simpler model to look at. You don't have to know the tokenomics, release schedules, all these crazy things, you know, unlocks, like all this types of stuff you don't have to really pay attention to in the NFT space. It's not really there. And retail feels a lot more comfortable with this, I think, because it's a lot easier to understand. You can quite literally see what people are listing for. Not that you can't with a token, but it's easier to sort of hide orders with tokens or fake people out. And in the NFT space, it's pretty obvious. You just see what things are selling for, and it's a lot more in your face. Again, an advanced trader, you can pick up on these things on tokens, but for the average retail trader, you know, again, it's just a lot simpler to understand. This goes into also my next point, which is it's an easier on-ramp. Um, your whole, all your NFT platforms like OpenSea has an amazing UI. Now I know a lot of people like to hate on OpenSea, um, but let's face it, it's a lot easier to on-ramp into something like OpenSea. Um, and again, your focus is just pulled away from the price itself. Um, not that people don't care about price, they absolutely do in NFT spaces, but it's a lot easier to distract away from that price. Um, you also add in a trading dynamic, so you might have one NFT and want to trade for another. You know, if you have one board ape, you like this other board ape, you can do lots of trading. Um, and there's that whole piece as well. All of these things put upward. Uh, they, first of all, they increase holders, you know, long-term holders. So most people are likely to hold on for longer, um, even if they're trading between the NFTs within that same project. Again, they're still holding one. Um, so no added supply is added to the market. Um, and again, you know, you just, you have like this sort of game where people try to grind up to the top and this all puts upward pressure on the price. So 
You know, I wanted to talk about this because again, like I said, I was a heavy NFT critic in the beginning. I definitely felt like NFTs were, I, I didn't understand their values. And mainly, that, that's mainly because I don't necessarily understand art, okay? So I have never really like gone out and bought an expensive painting and you know been like oh this is why this is expensive and let me break down the painting for you i don't i don't necessarily um understand that piece but the parallel is certainly there i mean this literally is just digital art um and for most people who are in the art space it's really easy to transition and understand why nfts hold value and for those of you who are just sitting there scratching your head as to why nfts have value it's it's really the same fundamentals as why art has value in general you know why is the mona lisa so valuable it's literally just a you can find pictures of the mona lisa on google right so does that mean you own the mona lisa no the original is still always going to be worth more than the picture that you got on google um so again why is that and i think once you start to understand those dynamics um you know some of it is f flaunting right some of it is the idea that i have a bored ape you know like my status is elevated you know same ideas with like a rolex or things like that and again that's sort of also the same dynamic you have in just regular physical art um but i also think there's quite a bit of value in the nft space that goes above and beyond art itself the pfp narrative is massive i think that is huge showing off your your profile picture when you are integrated into so many platforms every day on your phone um and again, it it sort of is a branding tool. Um, so I, I hope this video helps you guys understand this. Again, I wanted to talk about it because I didn't understand it. You know, I really didn't. It took me a minute to really truly understand why NFTs have the value they have. And I really, really believe that they will outperform uh, most tokens next cycle. I think NFTs are just going to be where retail investors start uh, for the most part. And yes, like I said, you'll have some tokens, smaller tokens that blow up and do well. That's definitely going to be a thing. Um, but as far as simplicity and really, you know, user engagement, I mean, you're seeing that even now. We're like, we're in a terrible bear market, yet NFTs are still doing really well. You still have apes selling in the millions, um, punk selling in the millions. You've got lots and lots of activity and volume still happening in the NFT space, which is amazing to see. And again, it's because I think people look at it more as like entertainment. Yes, there's the investment dynamic. Um, but for the most part, people would be totally okay with a lot of their NFT, not okay with their NFTs going to zero, but like they're less focused on the price and uh, it's more of like a sunk cost to them. Like, you know what? I really like this picture. You know, I'm going to buy it, use it as my PFP. If the price goes up, down, I, you know, I'd love it to go up. If it goes down, not a huge deal. I'll keep holding, you know, and I think that's sort of the mentality you get around NFTs. So also guys, I just want to make it abundantly clear. This is not financial advice. I mentioned it, so it's probably going to go to zero. All NFT projects will probably go to zero. No, just kidding. But seriously, guys, I am making a prediction on my current observations. I urge you to do your own research before investing in any NFTs. Again, hope this video helped you guys out. If this is your first time checking out the channel, check out some of my other videos. We cover lots of topics in the crypto space. Also, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.